Hi friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a watercolor project using a W plus nine set called Flora and Fauna three. It's a gorgeous six by eight stamp set with beautiful images. And I'm gonna be stamping the image of choice here using antique linen distress ink. I stamp it three times over watercolor cardstock to get a good impression. And then for some butterflies, I'm gonna be stamping with a black pigment ink. I'm using VersaFine Claire Nocturne Black ink. And this is a great pigment ink for lots of detail. And so I'm gonna stamp that twice and then emboss that with a clear embossing powder. This will really prevent me from smearing and smudging it while I paint the floral bouquet. Okay, to set up for my painting session, I have a brush, a stamp chamois or a paper towel if you don't have a stamp chamois, and a jar of water. And I'm just gonna choose the paint that I wanna use. And before I start painting, I'm gonna wet that down with some water. I'm gonna use a damp brush to pick up the pigment and then apply that to the nooks and cranny of my flower petals and then draw that pigment out with that same damp brush. If I feel there's too much pigment, I'll clean off my brush and remove the excess using my stamp chamois or paper towel. And then if I feel like my brush is too wet, I'll go ahead and remove that excess water on my stamp chamois as well. And then just repeat the process until you get the shading and colors that you like. Sometimes you have to go back to add a second layer. And when you go back to add a second layer, you almost have to commit to saturating that entire petal again, just so you don't have any harsh watercolor lines. But if you don't mind that, then you can just paint away. Watercoloring is definitely a self preference as to how you want your project to look. This is my way of controlling the pigment and the shading of each of the petals. When I'm done with my large flowers, I begin by working on my smaller flowers, working every other petal, and then coming back to make sure that the areas are dry before I start on the petals that are adjacent to the ones that I had previously worked on to make sure that the pigment doesn't bloom its way into a petal I don't want it to bloom into. I added some yellow for the floral centers, and now I'm working on my leaves. I paint each side of the leaves as separate so that I can add adequate shading to each side. For the leaves that stick straight up in the air like this, I maintain most of the shading at the bottom of the leaves. So it's like the light is uh, casting from above. For the flower arrangement, I was using a wet on dry technique. So because the butterflies are embossed, I'm using a wet on wet technique. I will apply water on my entire butterfly first and then add color to the edges and centers of the body and let there be a natural bloom of color. And then if there's too much of a bloom, I can wipe the color away using my damp brush. After die cutting, I realized I didn't color the butterfly bodies. So I went ahead and did that real quick and set them aside to dry while I added some more detail to the centers of all of these flowers on my flower arrangement. I'm using a Tombow Black monoline drawing pen and I'm just stippling these larger flowers and adding tiny dots and giving it some shading with a natural black color. And on these smaller flowers, I'm actually drawing small little stamens and adding little dots at the very end. I pulled out my Tim Holtz splat box because I wanted to splatter some white acrylic paint over my floral arrangement to give it some texture. Next, I'm gonna set it aside and work on my background. I have another watercolor panel. I have the old letter and crackle background stamp sets that I'm gonna be using. I smushed some pumice stone distress ink onto a craft mat, and I'm just gonna add some color to this watercolor panel to give it an old paper look. I'm loading my brush with lots of water and picking up that distress ink and just painting that color onto my watercolor panel. It ended up being a fairly even watercolor wash, so I wanted to go back in and apply a darker concentration of colors in opposite corners. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and smush some more ink onto my craft mat and then apply colors in opposite corners. I didn't tape this panel down and I'll be drying it with a heat tool. It does warp the paper a little bit and if that bothers you, you can run it through a laminating machine and that will help flatten out your panel. I want to make this an old letter paper look. So I'm applying some antique linen ink on my crackle background and I'm just gonna stamp that crackle background into one corner. And then I'm gonna do the same with the old letter background in the opposite corner. 
The stamping is a little bit too crisp for me because I want it to be more antique-ish. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with water to kind of get that to bloom and give it a natural aged look. I let the water sit there just long enough to get my microfiber cloth out to soak up the excess water. To make my background a little bit more interesting, I used the Tim Holtz Deckel Torn Edge Trimmer and gave it a torn edge look. At this point, my panel is a little bit warped. I thought it would be easier to go ahead and add some foam tape and adhere it to a card base before I start putting the rest of my card together. I've got that panel attached to my card base now and I'll just go ahead and add some foam tape to my floral bouquet or arrangement and attach that to my card, making sure that there is room for the butterflies as well. I gave some flair to the butterflies' wings, kind of molding them to flare up a little bit and shape them with my fingers without bending the watercolor paper. To attach these butterflies to my card, I'm using a strip of foam adhesive and only attaching it to the bodies of the butterflies on the back. That way the wings can stick up and there's nothing holding them down. Last but not least, we're gonna prepare our sentiment. I've got a black piece of cardstock here and I've got my sentiment saying, thinking of you. I'm gonna stamp that with Versamark ink. I'm gonna add some white embossing powder and then heat set that. Off camera, I trim that to size. Then I add a strip of black foam tape to the back. Then I use a T ruler to make sure everything is straight before I adhere my sentiment down. And that finishes my card for today. I really hope you enjoyed this project and I hope it really inspires you to watercolor. If you enjoyed this project, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I've got two more videos to share with you if you'd like to watch some more. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.